Uh, let's hear another song. Sure. This is one from a new album that we just recorded. She burned all her red sequin dresses and she became a woman of God. Hey, hey, hallelujah. Ooh, baby, there is power in the blood and there is power running to the street light. Outside my window that's been keeping me away. There's power in the union, but we live in a right to work state. Some days I don't trust a single person. If there's a point, it's one that I can't see. But I'm gonna make something good from this, even if it is the death. The Mont Vales on WNCW. Now there's an influence of the Tillers that I hear on that one. I don't know. Thinking about unions and the right to work state, I just thought, oh, that yeah, it's like some, a subject the Tillers might touch on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was Molly uh, Rochelson singing on that one, and actually I heard a sonically a bit of uh, everybody feels influenced there. Maybe Jill Andrews. Maybe her voice is similar mm-hmm. or something. Wow, that's a huge compliment. Oh, Thank well, you very much. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. So this is from a new album that you've already recorded and it's getting worked on yeah yeah getting mixed right now getting mixed uh-huh. um yeah no idea about the timeline for release at this point but right. we're very excited about it so this is your second album uh do you feel like you've you learned a lot from the first time you made an album and you kind of applied it this time is it like quite the learning curve yeah and i think we also had a producer this time which was so amazing it was just really great to have someone to bounce ideas off of and to help us communicate the ideas that we had made all the difference so the first one you produced yourselves yeah well we had um the person who recorded us recorded us helped us out some but it was really just like a few hours in the living room so not too much room to like take it in different directions Yeah. yeah yeah More of like a just like a snapshot of where we were at that point, having like played songs together when we were home from the various other places that we lived in. Yeah. Um, just like kind of capturing them where they had landed at that point. Um, and then this next album is a lot bigger. There's we have a full band and. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's a whole whole other thing. So we're very stoked about it. Well, those those albums like your first one are great where it's just like, let's just like capture where we're at right now and it's just kind of like not throw it together, but let's just like, you know, right here, right now, going to record it. Uh, minimalist orientation, I guess, sort of like a time capsule. This is where we are, casual, informal, and now you have this one. Uh, and, you know, maybe you can tell folks that 
haven't recorded before. What does a producer do? You know, so we were always saying, oh, this was produced by and this was mixed by. Well, to you, first time now with a producer, what did he or she do that you really noticed was helpful? Yeah, we early on we sent him recordings of all the songs, and we don't know Nashville numbers, so <laughs> that was like the beginning of what he did was make charts, and thank God for him doing that. That made it so much easier to communicate with all the musicians. But, okay, we, um, we, we should back up here, I, and I just learned about this myself from a <laughs> really cool podcast, Cocaine and Rhinestones, oh, um, we love um, it. where they talk <laughs> about, what, what are they called, the Nashville numbers? So, yeah. Okay, so what is that? Yeah, so I wish I was I knew thinking more phone numbers. It's like, yeah, well, you don't know too many people in Nashville. And like, That's okay. No. Yeah. Um, from my understanding, it was invented for session musicians who didn't know how to read music. And I was like, okay, if you don't know how to read music, here's a different way of communicating charts for songs. Um, but honestly, it's all Greek to me at this point, and I hope to learn more about it soon. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a whole new vocab for that. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I think our producer just did a great job of like which e- with each song giving us different directions it could go in and like helping us make decisions about that. Like, do we want it piano driven? Do we want less banjo on this one? You know, all kinds of different things. Yeah. Yeah. It was just he spoke a, a whole other language um, that he like brought us into, which is really lovely. And, um, you know. Uh, also, we haven't said his name yet, which is weird. <laughs> his, his name is Mike Lapinto. Um, that's who produced this record. And uh, yeah, he he plays guitar for Chris Stapleton. So he's like very mm. in the like Nashville sound world. And, yeah. I, you know, so brought that element to it and just heard how things could be much bigger. Um, so that was really fun to play in. Cool. Cool. And so mm. the album's coming out sometime this year, I guess. Yeah, maybe we probably. Hope. Oh, you're not sure. We'll maybe see. not. Yeah. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna do the whole pitching to record labels. Oh yeah, activity. Uh huh. <laughs> that can take a little while and yeah. stuff. <laughs> Meanwhile, though, you're on the tour, just the two of you going up and down. I don't know, up into Lancaster, Pennsylvania, DC area, hitting Georgia yeah. and all that. Um, uh, coffee shops, bars, listening rooms. What you, is it? The gamut? Are you pl- part of festivals? Have you done that scene? Only a little bit with festivals. Yeah, listening rooms, bars. I'd say that's our main thing right now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. Where does the name come from, the Montvales? Um, I grew up off of Montvale Road in Maryville, Tennessee, hmm. um, which is just right outside of Knoxville. Um, and then there's also like a Camp Montvale. Um, and there's not a great answer. Mostly we just love the way it sounds. Um and I always thought it was like a really cool word, but I thought it was weird that I didn't know anybody who had that surname. Yeah. And then I uh, learned that it's not a surname. It's just like there's this whole series of like old timey camp names in the Smokies. There's like right. Elkmont and Tremont and Camp Montvale. Yes. Um, and yeah, just seemed right for us for some reason. <laughs> those those camps, yeah, those, they have a name, they have a look about them, they have a even a, a paint color. It's usually like a shade of green and like on, mm-hmm. on in nice log cabins and stuff. <laughs> uh, Montreat Black Mountain area around us has them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Totally. Well, good to know the origin of the name. More of a place name than a surname, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It, it's the Montvales. Again, playing 185 King Street in Brevard tonight. They're about to head on up there. 